better way to kick off the new year than to talk about toys that are over 40 years old. So, stick around. and dorkettes and welcome to nostalgia syndrome my name is rob and we are kicking off 2024 by taking a look at some of the raddest rides in 80s action figures real quick before we embark on our adventure i just want to apologize for kind of missing the last half of 2023 i don't know what to say other than i was ill just flat out ill and not in the good beastie boys way i was out for the count and even the christmas holiday for as much fun as i had and how awesome the whole experience was for me and my family i was just flat out dead for all intents of purposes i mean i would sit down for a second and next thing i know i would be up a couple hours later with missing time it was crazy insane but anyway enough of that crap we are marching forward 2024 with all the great 80s and now 90s stuff that we love so without further ado let's get to number one on our list of raddest rides in 80s action figures just when you thought it was safe to open the refrigerator door comes our first rad ride released by mattel in 1988 this is the food fighters combat carton and it's just that it is an egg carton that is the food fighters version of an apc as it holds many figures and is armed to the teeth with a ketchup bottle cannon on top now the cool thing about the ketchup cannon is that it can launch tomato slices and slices of pepperoni and they're done in that awesome like helicopter propeller spinny thing if you remember those toys that you would put the propeller on and crank up and then push the button and it would shoot up in the air yes this ketchup cannon does the same thing on top of having the ketchup cannon the combat carton also has some openings on its top that you can mount machine guns and have your figures on top keeping a watchful eye out for villains now the novelty of the food fighters toy line is pretty simplistic it's a military toy line that stars anthropomorphic bits of food that has taken up arms and has marched into combat versus each other good food and bad food i mean it's pretty simplistic like i said and there's not a lot to say i mean this combat carton is pretty awesome i'm a fan of the gi joe apc and this kind of hits home because this version of the food fighter apc is very reminiscent of that awesome gi joe toy anyway let's take a look at the original commercial from 1988 that featured the food fighters and the combat carton we will return after these messages yo gregory you want this you'll never cut the mustard mean winner <laughs> food fight food your history private pizza pow and your lunch combat carton Fire! What's going on? Joy saved this food again, Ma. Food fighters, figures in combat carton, eat sold separately. Our second rad ride also comes from Mattel, but this time from 1985. And this is the Sea Harp from the Princess of Power toy line. I have a ton of respect for the Princess of Power toy line. I mean, who would have thought that a spin-off of Masters of the Universe starring She-Ra 
He-Man's sister, would be just as popular as the original source material. Anyway, the Sea Harp is a seahorse that would help Shira and her comrades. I think it's best for me to consult the back of the box and read to you what it says. Here we go. Sea Harp is a mystical seahorse who once lived deep beneath Crystal Falls. Playset sold separately. When Shira needs to summon her friends, she has Sea Harp play a musical message which can be heard throughout Etheria. The Sea Harp carries Shira and her friends swiftly over the land and off to new adventures. Now that seems kind of odd, a seahorse that moves swiftly over land, but we won't talk about that. What we will talk about though is Sea Harp is pretty cool looking. I mean, great color scheme and you just have to love the packaging that just screams Lisa Frank. I mean, a great color palette, very loud, bombastic. I love it. Now, the one thing that it says is Sea Harp can play a musical message. Now, you would think that would be a battery operated button press and play a melodic little tune. Not the case. Behind the seat, which features a real quilted blanket pillow thing, is a slider bar. And when you move this slider bar, it plucks rubber bands that would be placed behind the seat. And it's supposed to mimic the sounds of a harp. But I would assume it doesn't sound like a harp at all. It just sounds like rubber bands being plucked. I mean, it's a pretty cool idea, but if they would have gone that extra step to include a battery operated melody, it probably would have been even better. The only other accessory that it came with, other than the rubber band harp and quilted cushion, was a golden bridle and reins for Shira to use to drive the seahorse across land. Again, that doesn't sound right, but let's get to number three. Our third rad ride comes from the Smurfs. This was a vehicle playset that was released by Applause in 1984. And this is the Moon Explorer set. Now the Moon Explorer set comes with an awesome Smurf sized rocket ship, a lunar rover with wagon, various moon rocks, and a USA flag, which is a little off-putting because the Smurfs aren't even American. But anyway, it also comes with Astro Smurf. Now this playset is originally based on a Smurfs comic from 1970, but we also got to see it in animated form during the Smurfs Saturday morning cartoon. If you remember, Astro Smurf is a depressed fellow because he can never reach the stars. So Papa Smurf and Handy Smurf help him create a rocket but they know it won't really reach outer space. So they kind of dope him up that he falls asleep, whisk him off with the rocket to a more lunar landscaped area around a volcano, and the Smurfs dress up as aliens called Swoofs. It was pretty cool. I remember the episode pretty vividly from when I was a kid. But anyway, this vehicle playset is pretty awesome, especially if you are a Smurf collector. I mean, you don't even have to collect Smurfs to display this rocket on your shelf and have the little lunar rover with Astro Smurf trucking around. Now, the only thing that this little vehicle playset is missing is a couple Swoof figures. I mean, Swoofs had jet black hair, more of like a cave Smurf appearance. And I always thought that Smurfs had black hair under their hats from this episode. Anyway, it would be pretty cool to get a couple of those figures with this playset. Now our fourth rad ride comes from a toy line that I've been pretty hesitant to talk about. It's one that I love so much, but its origins are kind of convoluted and are based with one foot here in America and one foot in Japan. 
So we're going to skip over the origins for today and just talk about this vehicle. The vehicle is the Bullwhip and it was released for the Spiral Zone toy line from Tonka in 1987. Now this vehicle was for the bad guys, the Black Widows, and more specifically their leader, Overlord. To be honest, this is a pretty big vehicle and it's surprising that it's only made to carry one figure, Overlord. This vehicle has eight movable wheels and a rubber band powered bullwhip type attack feature on the front. On the back, it also has a missile launcher with real firing missiles. Now the Spiral Zone franchise was a pretty heady property, especially when you consider the cartoon series featured a post-apocalyptic Earth with people being drugged by toxic gases and becoming zombie-like under the control of the Black Widows. But then you had the good guys that would come save people, liberate towns, things like that. But back in the 80s, the threat of nuclear war and post-apocalyptic future was a very real fear. So, like I said, it's kind of odd that that would be featured in a cartoon series, but I loved it, and it's probably where my love of that type of post-apocalyptic setting comes from. Anyway, this was an awesome toy line. This looks to be an awesome vehicle. Unfortunately, with all awesome 80s toy lines, pretty much all 80s toys in general, it goes for a hefty price nowadays. So, my hopes of ever getting these toys back into my collection again, yeah, it's never going to happen. I mean, I never had any of the vehicles, had a couple of the figures, and I absolutely loved them. Anyway, this was a pretty rad ride. I mean, eight wheels, a bullwhip, weapon, missiles... Yeah, the only thing it's missing are a couple extra seats for other Black Widows to tag along. Now for our fifth and final awesome action figure vehicle, we're going from one post-apocalyptic world to another as we take a look at Captain Power's Mobile Skybike Launcher. This was released by Mattel in 1987, and this vehicle has a lot going for it. First off, I mean, it's just really cool looking. It's kind of like a sled type of vehicle with wheels on the back, kind of reminiscent of the Battle Ram, in my view of it at least. And it had room for two characters, one to drive it and one to operate the turret on the back. But the thing that separates this awesome vehicle from others was it had two removable sky bikes that would be docked to the sides. These small, simple little sky bikes could be detached and their wings folded down. I mean, it's like getting three vehicles in one. Four vehicles if you count the pilot and the dude on the turret. I mean, this toy line had so much promise and the live action show that it was based on was pretty awesome. I have very vague memories of it, but I remember enjoying it every time I saw it. Now, this was a toy line that the figures weren't very poseable, but they had a lot of personality. I mean, everything from the heroic good guys to the dastardly villains just oozed personality. They had some really awesome character designs, and seeing those in live action on Saturday mornings just was the cherry on top. I mean, seeing live action versions of some of these vehicles and people in power armor and stuff like that, I mean, as a kid in 87, that just blew my mind. Anyway, folks, that was a look at five Radical Rides from 80s Action Figures. This is our first official episode of 2024, and hopefully, yeah, it'll be more consistent than the end of 2023. And again, I apologize for that, and I'm just, I'm looking towards the future, and just, we're running with it. 
Anyway, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.